Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to question number 30 from your SBR revision kit so yesterday I finished the SBR textbook all the lectures and all the question and answer there were eight questions from your question and answer chapter I've completed all now we are moving towards the revision kit and I'll be focusing on the revision kit so every day as I said before I'll be uploading two questions there are total 20 questions, 20 questions more that I have to finish from the revision kit. So each day I do two questions in 10 days, I'll be completing the SBR kit. So let's start with question number 30. Section A questions, I've covered all the questions. It's there in, in the playlist, you will check. And some questions, I have done it, but it's not uploaded in the playlist that I'll be doing shortly. Okay, there will be a delay for a few days. So after I complete all the questions, I'll be uploading uh, my I will be updating my playlist right for the revision kit so if you type the name of the question for example this question the company name is handful so likewise if you type like that for the, for the previous questions you will get it right that question might come it might not appear in the playlist but question is there so section a question both question number one and two that means the 30 marks question that is for group accounting i've covered all go check it out and also question number two your ethics question where your ethics question comes right your two professional marks that also have covered now i will be focusing on section b question okay and uh, there are questions based on uk gap for uk gap that i'm not covering i didn't cover the chapter as well as the questions because it is for the uk syllabus it's not applicable to you you are doing international right the international version of SBR so you don't need that UK gap okay that is the one who is studying in UK they need it so we you don't have to do questions for that okay so let's start with hand food and this is very latest paper from September December 2020 okay it's a very good question because you have things which is not usually tested for example SMEs and we have employee benefit okay that is your pension your IS 19 so these two things we are going to cover in this question first we will start with sme and then this thing sme calculation is not here we just have to write okay so i'm not going to read each answer line by line but i'm just going to tell you overall because students often ask me how to write theory part they are good in writing uh, doing calculations and all and on calculations if they have to comment they have to write they, that they can do it but Purely if it's something to write theory, like SME, students often struggle to write. Even though it's very easy, okay, I will show you the question and it looks that everything is similar. And students often duplicate uh, what they have written in the previous to the next. Okay, that you should not do. So let us first uh, quickly go to the requirements and read the requirements. If you see there are too many requirements, it looks like it's very big, but do not panic. Okay, just quickly read. It's very small, okay. Marks is very small requirement a under requirement a it's three all the three of sms only okay first discuss the nature of sme standard and the principal difference between sme standard and full ifrs so difference between sme and full ifrs for four marks okay this type of question you can expect since it was asked for the latest paper it could be asked for you also even though this question is not asked very often but remember your section b questions okay they focus more on this other aspect okay section a we know clearly question number one group accounting all consolidation everything question number two ethics and some other accounting issues section b question okay is more on other like conceptual framework your uh, current issues your sme your integrated reporting sustainable uh, sustainability reporting all this other things are covered in section b okay so that also you need to uh, work on smes and you need to practice on those also so let's start we have i think yeah integrated reporting also we have in this question so that's for four marks so four marks means you will get four points for writing four different uh, four marks for writing four different points right second discuss the effect that information asymmetry can have on the decision to invest in sme if there's an information asymmetry what impact it could have on the decision to invest in SME, whether the investors will like to invest in SME or not. That is the question, okay? Many students uh, didn't understand this question, okay? So, even though this question has nothing to do with your uh, knowledge of your uh, IFRS, right? Your accounting standard, 
you need to know how to answer this type of questions. You can expect in SBR, right? For four marks again. Third, discuss how integrated reporting could help SMS better understand and better communicate. See, this is about integrated reporting, how they can help SMS. So make sure when you're writing integrated reporting, don't go and write the six capitals. Okay, or don't go and define, don't write the content of the integrated reporting. That is not what is asked for you or not the benefit also. They asked how they can help the SME to better understand as well as communicate. Okay, how they create values to the investor. So this is for the investor. You have to look from the investor's perspective. Often students uh, ignore this part. Okay, so and the two professional marks you will get for this for part A only. It does not come for part B. Depends on the quality of discussion. If your quality of discussion is good, good for you. Okay, and B is about your uh, employee benefit. It comes from here. Okay, we'll read that also. We'll read the requirements at list. Discuss with suitable calculations. You have to discuss as well as calculations as required. Okay, principles of how hand food should account for the current service cost. Main theme is current service cost. Office employee benefit for the year ended. They have given you the year also. So you have to discuss and calculate the principles for current service cost on 31st December 2002. Okay, for six marks. Remember, this six marks you have to allocate between discussion and calculation. Okay, discussion is four marks. Calculation is only two marks. So this is on the marking scheme I'm telling you. Okay, I will show you the marking scheme at the end of the video. Then the last four marks is for discuss the impact of the additional employee benefit for the year ended 31st December 2003. If they were, Hanford is making some changes in the assumption. What is the assumption? See. Relating to first, there are some assumptions. Okay, we'll go through the case study. You will understand better. Now, if they change those assumptions, the two assumptions, what is the impact? Okay, one is increase in employee salaries above 3%. It's increasing more than 3%, the employee salary. Second, decrease in the probability of employees leaving the company. Okay, that means the probability that employees are going to leave the company is now reducing. Note, always read the note. It's very important. Never ignore this. There is no need to provide any calculation in your answer to second part. You might think that this uh, this uh, part, the first part of B, you might have to change and then show the impact for the second one. No, they didn't ask for any change in the calculation that you've already done in the first part of B. You just have to write. Without changing the calculation or doing any calculation, you have to discuss for four marks. Okay. It's up to you. You can answer in any order. They both are not related. So let's start with the first one, part A, because, right. You can see some numbers are given to you and some of this thing. Employee benefit will read later. First, we'll finish with SME. SME quickly you can read. It's very easy, right? Handful is a SME which has introduced a benefit to encourage employees to remain with the entity. The company's financial year ends 31st December and it prepares its financial statement using IFRS standard, but it is interested in the difference with the SME standard. So, like this, quickly you have to read over okay? SME. It can be argued that SMEs face financing difficulties because there's a serious information asymmetry between SME and investor. That means SME has more information that investors do not have. Okay. This is a disadvantage that they are saying. Information estimate in the context of SME means that SME has access to relevant information while the investors suffer the lack of relevant information. It can be argued that SME standard decreases information asymmetry between the entity and the investors. On the other hand, they are saying it might decrease the information asymmetry between the entity and the investors. Where SMEs lead in product and service innovation, they can also lead in innovation for integrated reporting. There's a clear, concise, and persuasive case for SMEs. Why SME and their stakeholders stand to benefit greatly by using integrated reporting. So nothing much is there from this paragraph. Okay, so that means most of the things that you have to write in Part A, okay, you have to write from your knowledge base. Okay, very rarely you have to uh, apply in the case study. Okay, because nothing much has been uh, given there. The facts that you have to extract. From the case study, it's not like that. This is a little bit uh, different question. Okay, so let's uh, see the answer for it. If you see the key answer tips, okay, SMA is not a standard which is regularly asked. It's a less familiar topic. Make sure you're familiar with this. Okay, I have covered this also. You can go under my SBR lectures and get it from there. Okay, so part A, this is less demanding than usual. Okay, usually things uh, things are very demanding, right? You need a lot of knowledge. Uh, I mean, you have to apply a lot of what you know. Application skill is less here. Okay. But you do need to have the relevant knowledge of SME. 
okay don't spot questions okay study the whole syllabus exclamation mark is there that that means they're very serious so now when you come to sms standard okay you can this is an open-ended question write it in any way you have to write the nature number one and the differences with the sme and the full ifrs okay when you're talking about the nature i will take you to the marking scheme directly okay to show you the marks just focus on first part of a so when you're discussing okay two marks for simplifications and omission one mark for simplification one mark for omission you know that ifrs for SMEs, there are some simplifications and some omissions also from the full ifrs then the disclosure part one mark and another one mark for recognized concept that's how you are getting the four marks okay so let's see here nature what is the nature their main nature the main aim okay their main aim when they produce this standard was what that they want this standard to be relevant to be reliable to be useful okay that gives high quality and understandable accounting standard for smes this is only for smes okay relevant relevant and they provide some good quality and useful information that is understandable for sms that's the main aim of sma standard right if you see sma standard see i'm not reading line by line you can read the answer on your own okay it's there full answer is there i'm just explaining you the concept and how to build up your answer okay so this standard i'm also explaining you the concept so maybe you can write in your own words okay this standard is it's not a new standard don't think it's new everything that comes in sms standard is from what your full ifrs is only it is based from this only it is they are taking from there only this is the source right but they are not taking as it is they are doing some some adjustments to it they are deleting some things okay they are making things simpler under sme that's the thing that they are doing right so if you see definitely this standard will be much smaller than the full ifrs standard it is you can take it in a single sheet right single uh, paper so it is a single standard that is divided into simplified sections okay it has some simplified sections and some omitted also you can even give examples what is omitted simplified sections definitely you don't have to give examples uh, maybe you can give okay but you don't have to give all the examples under simplification one and two is enough because look at the marks also it's just for four marks if you go through the textbook there are so many simplifications which are there you don't have to list all one and two is enough okay now coming to om omission omission also you can give one example one or two example for example eps IAS with standard is 33 earnings per share is not accepted it is omitted for sme and also segmental reporting ifrs 8 omitted right so examples like this you can give and addition to this certain accounting standards are not even allowable not allowable for sme standard okay they are not even allowable for this for example there are no separate guidance for non-current assets held for sale for sms right so now some examples of simplifications you can give okay they make simplifications in three areas recognition measurement and disclosure okay so some examples is there remember even though we always say don't write in bullet points they have written in bullet points but this is actually they are not writing it in bullet points because they are writing full sentences okay so make sure that you write in full sentence it should not be one or two words so let's talk about intangible asset okay anything you can give an given as an example so here they have talked about intangible assets so if they're talked about intangible asset we'll stick with it so intangible asset usually what what happens you amortize it over the useful life right it has to be but if that useful life you cannot determine then that useful life you assume it to be 10 years only okay not more than 10 years not less if you cannot identify determine what is the useful life then 10 use 10 years otherwise useful life second the cost model okay this cost model is for what for investments in associates okay that means from the cost you deduct the impairment loss but if there is a published price quotation 
then you have to use the fair value then you cannot use the cost model for the associates okay or for or for any investments now so disclosure also you have to talk about disclosure requirements also all this you were talking about the standard this is omitted this is uh, simplified and this is not accepted uh, this is uh, no it's not allowable that's it now we have to talk about disclosure because one mark is for disclosure okay so disclosure is where it's reduced substantially it is reduced obviously disclosure will be much much less in sme compared to full ifr standard okay why why do they disclose it because it's very costly for sms cost benefit consideration and the other one is not all of it will be appropriate for their users also for the sme user not everything will be needed for example earnings per share is it needed for sme standard no therefore, therefore it's omitted so you don't have to disclose also for those things so disclosure is less one is not appropriate for user needs and cost benefit consideration now we are moving to the second which is information asymmetry okay because of this so the question was this is also for four marks okay for information asymmetry because of information asymmetry how can this have an impact on the 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 investor who is going to invest in sme okay you have to talk about that four points is enough okay so we know that they have told that ifrs for sms decreases information asymmetry why because of its recognition measurement and disclosure Number one, recognition measurement are simplified, easier, disclosures are reduced. Right? It's not so much of disclosure that you have to disclose so much is reduced. Users can easily see their disclosure. They can go through all the disclosures. Firm will have a better understanding. SME also have to disclose less. So information estimate in that sense is reduced. But you cannot show all the facts. You cannot disclose all the facts. Certain facts are not disclosed. We are talking about information asymmetry. Information asymmetry means uh, both the parties do not, does not have access to the same amount of information. One party will be having more, the other party will be having less. That is the meaning of information asymmetry. It is not symmetrical. Okay. So they might not disclose to the investors. We are talking to the investors. So talk only from the point of investor. See from the point of investor because the requirement asked you so. Okay. So not all will be disclosed to an investor under any accounting standard. Then what happens? that you have to discuss okay as sms will have access to relevant information but investors will lack the relevant information so because of this what happened what what would be the impact on the investor that uh, that want to invest in sme will they invest this will have an adverse effect on the decision making if they don't have relevant information for the investor okay information related to sms for example information regarding sms credit what is their credit what is their risk what is their benefits this should be known to the investor if this is not known they cannot make a decision that means sme is having that information as an advantage right over the investor so in this case investors are at a disadvantaged position another disadvantage is financial institutions banks and all they will raise their borrowing cost borrowing cost will increase they will increase their interest rate the lending rates will increase why because no one wants to take high amount of risk if they have less information the risk is high for them that means their credit losses the risk of credit losses is high they do not want this so for them to reduce this is they will increase the lending rate or they might not even invest also at all the financial institutions okay so the more complete and less transparent remember the risk will be higher if it's more incomplete and less transparent the information from the sma so higher will be the risk relating to what the investment if the risk is higher means they will demand higher return also for the risk that they are taking and also the excess that they want to have to the investment by sme will be determined by the quality of financial information if their quality of financial information is good the risk that is there from the information asymmetry will reduce okay if the financial statements are of quality now we are coming to the integrated reporting how this can help sme understand communicate right uh, we'll read the requirements again that understand and communicate to the investor right 
for five marks. So five points you can give. Just see. This show, I'll show you the marking scheme. Okay. Just see for this one, it's just four marks, four points. You have to write basically the information asymmetry issues and the investors' knowledge that they will not invest, the risk is high, all those things. Coming to this one, better understanding two marks, better communication one mark, nature of integrated reporting itself is two marks. Remember, whenever a question is asked, how this will affect another thing, you have to talk about that thing also, the nature of that thing also. For example, the question is why integrated reporting will help to better understand, better communicate. So it's not okay just to under explain, okay, better understand and better communicate. This, these are the ways that it will help them to better understand, better communicate. Nature of integrated reporting itself is very important. Because it is because of that nature that it will help them to recognize the benefit from the integrated reporting. Okay. So for this also you don't need, see, you don't need the case study to rely on. You can answer this even from your knowledge also. Even though you don't know much of integrated reporting, you don't know much of knowledge, don't panic. Whatever you know about integrated reporting in whatever way it can help SME, you can think of, just write it. Just write it. No one is telling you to be perfect. No one is telling you you have to know the whole syllabus. 100% you can know. You will forget here and there. Okay? No matter what. Especially questions like this, where you don't have calculations, where you don't have the knowledge of a standard, IFRS standard. And because you are more stressing on those rather than this. Right? Integrated reporting also, it is, it's there. You can check that lecture is also there. It is in the last few lecture. Integrated reporting is also there. So this about integrated reporting. So we know that it will help them better understand and better communicate how they create value. Okay, so basically it's like a roadmap for SME. Through integrated reporting, SME will understand in what areas they need to develop, in what areas are they uh, advancing, what is their strength. It's like a roadmap for them, for SME. They can consider multiple capitals talk about multiple capitals. That is the nature of integrated reporting that they talk about multiple capitals. It is not just one capital that helps to create the value for the company. Multiple capital, six capitals are used. Right? So, this an integrated reporting presents a more complete report. It is more complete. Okay? So, because it's more complete, it will help SME to understand their business. SMEs will understand their business better through the integrated reporting. Remember, this question is how it will help SME to understand and communicate. For SME, we are talking about. So, for SME, they will understand their business better now. Okay, so once they understand their business, they can implement that business model which will help them to grow. One mark you will get from here early. Then, SMEs, okay. SMEs use range of resources and relationships to create value, right? So, integrated reporting, how will uh, it help? How will it help them? To better understand. We didn't go to the communication part. We are still in the understanding part. How it will help SME to understand. Integrated reporting will help SME to understand the factors that determines its ability to create value over the time. What are the factors? It could be any factor. Also, deeper understanding of the business. Integrated reporting will help SME to have a deeper understanding. They can look at the strength. What is the strength of their business model? And if there's any deficiency, they can spot it through the integrated reporting. How? Because the six capitals will provide. Looking at the six capitals, you will know, okay, my human capital is not doing good. My financial capital is doing good. My manufactured capital is not doing good. So like this, you know your strengths and weaknesses. So it will help SME. Okay, and also it is a forward-looking approach. So this is the nature of integrated reporting that it is forward-looking and a sound strategy decision making can be made. Understood. Oh now we are moving towards what? Communication. Communicating. Understanding is okay. We have understood. Now how are you going to communicate? See, SMS usually have few tangible assets. Okay, and they operate in a virtual world. So, if they have few tangible assets, in this case, conventional accounting will fail to provide a complete picture. Right? Because maybe they are creating value through other assets, not just financial capital, not just through profit and cash. 
that no, that uh, no, conventional accounting will fail to show you but integrated uh, reporting will show you that right capital could be employee expertise or it could be the customer loyalty or it could be the intellectual property okay these are not accounted in the financial statements but it is there in the integrated reporting so this could be one aspect of sms value creation so this okay as a result sme can be left with insufficient information to make an informed decision okay if we are going by the conventional accounting sme stakeholders will not have much information to take in decision but if integrated reporting is used the nature of integrated reporting is that along the financial information they provide non financial measures also so stakeholders for stakeholders is good they will understand better right also narrative information is provided so this helps fulfill the communicational need also whatever anything that needs to be communicated can be communicated through integrated reporting to the other stakeholders also financial non financial narrative information everything now you are coming to part b current service cost okay for that we need to read the requirements there are changes in this in your new syllabus the only changes is that termination benefit is added that i have to cover and i think one more thing is there relating to the the curtailment asset curtailment and all that also we have to cover that i didn't cover yet but i will be covering it soon okay but this question is not for that so on 1st of jan 2002 introduced a benefit to encourage employees to remain in his employee for at least how many years 5 years because we often give benefit rights to employees to stay so they are promising its employee a lump sum benefit that is payable on 1st of jan 2007 what is that benefit 1% of their salary at 31st december 2006 whatever the salary is 1% of that salary will be the benefit provided that they remain employed but to get that benefit they have to be employed they cannot leave in that event okay now the current salary is given to you so the current salary on this date 1st of jan 2002 is 1.1 million per annum that is per year now following assumptions has been given first assumption salary will remain at 1.1 for until 31 that means from 1st of jan 2002 to 31st december 2002 that whole one year it will be 1.1 after that salary will increase to 3% each year from 1st of jan 2003 the next year and then the probability is that there's a 75% probability employees will still be employed at 31st december 2006 that means from 1st of jan 2002 to 2002 3 4 5 6 the 5 years for the 5 years 75% probability that employees will stay okay discount rate is 5% now they recognize actual gain and losses where in other comprehensive income okay don't just go by the face value sometimes when they say this is recognized in this place they can be incorrect right they might be right they might be incorrect sometimes so if they are incorrect you have to correct it okay i will not tell you whether they are incorrect or not now probably you will not understand also once you start doing the answer you will understand better but i'm just telling you okay so interest is recognized on an annual basis they use projected unique credit method to measure benefit obligations which means that the current service, all those things is uh, okay it's not so important benefit obligation which means the current service cost is increase in the present value of the the current service cost is the increase in the present value of the future benefit liability that means whatever the in the future you have to uh, give to the employee that is payable to the employee in the future it's a liability for you right that you you, ha you have an obligation to pay to your employee in the future but today what is the uh, what is the cost today of providing that benefit to your employees you will be presenting okay maybe up to 5 years but today what is the amount that's why you have to find the present value of the future benefit liability so for th so that is taken and if there is an increase in that present value of future benefit liability it is that is the meaning of current service cost that you take as a cost as an expense for you that you have to recognize in profit and loss account for the company that is giving this benefit to the employee current known as current service cost because currently in the current bd you are paying it okay current service cost there are two types of cost right yes past service cost current service cost don't worry about past service cost now they have not given anything about it the question is about current service cost 
you have to discuss and you have to calculate what is the current service cost how you have to account for this so current service cost is the increase in the present value of the because when your present value of future benefit liability increases that means now you have to pay more to your employees that is the meaning of increasing present value of future benefit liability so definitely cost will increase current service cost service because they are giving a service right your employees they are giving a service to you for that they are receiving a benefit so that's why service cost current service cost because current past means previous year benefit will be payable from the balance on their business account whatever the balance is there in their business bank account on 1st of jan 2007 that day the benefit they will receive okay today you are just find the cost for providing that benefit you are not giving the benefit itself okay remember benefit in the future only they will get present value is 5% period 4 and 5 years okay out of this two remember you have to use one the trick is here that's why they are giving you two to put you in uh, to uh, to put you in confusion okay which one to use you have to be very uh, careful with this okay whether it's four year or five years so now first one is what yes how you have to account for this the principle for accounting this that means from the standard you have to talk about it and also you have to calculate But if you think, is this a pension? It's like a pen, looks like a pension, but it is, it comes under, it is uh, other long term benefit. Why long term benefit? Because after 12 months, you are paying this. Okay, this benefit you are going to pay what to the current employees when? It will be settled. Okay, it is payable after 12 months, more than 12 months. So it's long term benefit. It comes under other long term benefit. There are many benefits that you can give to your employee short term benefit, long term benefit, termination benefit, pension. So, other long term benefit. Okay. But the good thing is, other long term benefit, the way you calculate it is very similar to your defined benefit pension scheme. Very similar to this, the accounting treatment. Mention that in your answer that it is similar to this one. Okay. But before that, let's see here the benefit is paid to current employee but will not be settled within 12 months. It will not be settled within 12 months, even though you are paying it to the current employee. That's why other long-term benefit in the current reporting period. And the benefit in the question is not a pension. Many students got confused. This is not a pension, okay? They have not mentioned anything about pension. But pensions are type of post-employment income. What is it? Post-employment income means after employment, is over they are going to receive a pension but this is not post employment income this is they are there they are giving service they are still being employed understood but over the long term they are going to receive the benefit understood so that's the difference now remember even though they are similar to defined benefit scheme everything is same one thing is different the remeasurement component the gain and losses for pension, it goes under other comprehensive income, but for other long term benefit like this one will be recognized in profit and loss. That's why I told you they are incorrect to recognize it in other comprehensive income, the gain and losses, actual gain and losses. Only under pension, yes, but long term benefit, no, it goes in the profit and loss. To understand this better, you need to revisit IS 19. Okay, just check here. I will highlight it for you. See? gain and losses in other comprehensive income they recognize it's incorrect corrected now for them down below you can see calculation calculation remember it's six mark question two marks is only for calculation four marks is for discussion discuss correctly you have to discuss where the gain and losses will go and how the treatment will be so now and write it in different para okay like this first para just say first para whatever the information you can take it the knowledge part and from your case study directly take it after that you will talk about second para you will talk about the accounting treatments where it should be recognized how it should be calculated and everything okay and mention the name of the company so hand food company because this is long-term benefit they are going to pay in the future it's like 
it's a liability for them so they should recognize what a liability it's an obligation for them that they have to pay the employee so recognize a liability okay as a result of additional employee benefit now just so one is recognition once recognition is over now let's go to the measurement in one para only you can explain it because recognition is maybe it's one line so how are you going to measure it company will measure the benefit liability at the present value of its obligation at the reporting date at the reporting date what is the present value of the future obligation that is your benefit liability okay so this amount is the estimated amount of benefit so that amount is only the estimated amount of benefit that employees have earned in return for their service in the current and the prior period write it in sentence like this okay after you have calculated the amount that that estimated amount of benefit is only what employee are going to receive for their service that they have given to the company now because this is about current service costs first talk about service costs then we'll break it down so the service cost net interest and remeasurement will be recognizing profit and loss remeasurement goes to other components of income but for other long term benefit it goes under profit and loss okay but service cost and net interest profit and loss only everywhere so these three things you have to talk about it okay even though question is about service cost don't forget net interest and remeasurement in fact under is 19 whether it is pension whether it is other long term benefit always uh, talk about the three things service cost net interest remeasurement okay because in a question if you see questions like the similar type where is 19 is asked they always talk about those three things okay because later for your part b second part of b you need even though for this you don't need okay so now we'll come to the calculation part it's always better to first write and then calculate because once you write you know this is what you are calculating but other way also you can do you can calculate it and then you can write so they should recognize a current service cost expenses and expense for them at what amount 7700 7, how this is the amount how they have got let's understand how they have got the amount dollar three thousands okay do it in excel you can copy paste it in word if you want later right so final expected final salary start with the salary that they have given what is it 1.1 million but for the first year it will remain 1.1 that means it will only increase by 3 percent over the next four years that's why 1.03 to the power 405 understood first year it will be 1.1 only that means the other remaining four year it will increase by 3 percent that means 1.238 million on that what is the benefit this is the salary on that one person is only the benefit so benefit for the current year is one person of that which will be 12.4 thousand it's not 12.4 million 12.4 thousand okay because come on one person of 1.238 million cannot be 12.4 million this is 12.4 thousand now you have to adjust this benefit for the current year remember this 12.4 you have to adjust it for the current year how based on the number of employees they told the probability of employee that is going to stay will be 75%. So 75% of 12,400, which is 9.3 or 9,300. Now this 9,300 to find the current service cost, you have to discount it. Okay, it is discounted at 5% over four years, 5% only. Already they have given you the rates. So this rate you are picking, not this one. It looks like that this will be the rate because they told over five years. No, first year it is not increasing, only over four years. You have to find the present value. So 0 0.823. Already they have found this, okay? Over four years with 5% present value. You don't have to go and check whether it's correct or not. Don't waste time. It is 0 0.823. You have to use those. Those are given there for you to use. Please make use of it. Don't waste your time to find, okay, what is uh, in four years, the 5%, what is the present value? don't go and waste your time there 0 0.823 so multiply it to find the current service cost so this 9.3 okay okay the current service cost 
after you discount it will be 7.7 7. that means 7700 so the 7700 is only the current service cost expense understood please go through the stages again one by one this is a similar step you have to do if a similar question you get like this with different numbers you start with the salary increase the salary if there's an increase in salary find the benefit which is percentage multiply by the employees that are going to stay then you discount it multiply by the discount factor and find that is your current service cost so this figure will be unwound each year and the moment that is recorded as the current service cost so the moment will be recorded as current service cost in so far as no other changes to assumptions are made if there are no assumptions changes to the assumptions are made you can record it like that but in the second part assumptions are changed you don't have to change this calculation okay now some tutorial note is given to you which is very important let's go through this tutorial note uh, they told that alternative method will be accepted okay this is just a model answer that is given to you by the acc alternative method if you have come up with same answer but in a different way it will be accepted how some of you you must have allocated this service cost over the five year service period rather than taking it for service cost that means you have recognized one fifth in each reporting period in this way also you will get full marks is this here confirmed full marks you will get like this some they have concluded that obligating even that means the obligation to pay the benefit starts from 1st of jan 2002 so the current service cost also has to be recognized from this date okay so present value of this would be 7.3 million just find out and see if you started in this way then present value will be 7.3 million and when you're finding the interest on this amount that is recognized over the first year then it will be equal it will be equal to 400 so if you add 400 with 7300 the interest with this present value it will be 7700 which is again correct so in both the ways you will be getting 7.7 .7 only still you will get full marks now second part they told if salary increases more than three percent and this reduces the percentage that employees are going to leave reduces so in both the condition what happens it will have the same effect on the additional benefit liability okay same effect means both are increasing in a similar direction both will affect both will have the same effect this they both will what they both will increase the benefit liability that is discounted at this date the date has changed one year later now why because if you increase the employee salary now on a higher salary you have to pay that one percent benefit liability correct second probability of employees leaving the company will uh, are reducing that means more employees are now staying you have to pay more employees the benefit so in both cases liability is increasing that means your current service cost also will increase for the year in profit and loss okay because your benefit has increased on this date as well as the number of employees who we are going to stay will now increase understood what about the interest what about the interest and what about the gain and losses the remeasurement part this two also you have to talk so interest which is calculate interest you calculate on the opening balance right opening balance of the benefit obligation so interest that you have calculated on the opening balance of the benefit obligation this will not be affected by the changes in assumption because whatever it will be on the opening balance only of the benefit obligation remember whatever the changes are there it will change later only the opening balance will remain same only so on that only you are ta taking interest that will not change with the changes in assumption correct so what we, what will be the amount what is the interest five percent on what seven thousand seven hundred right on 31st sorry on uh, yeah so opening balance will be the 7700 only closing balance for the previous year will be the opening balance for this year so 7700 on that you take five percent the interest the present value the five percent right to take interest you have to take five percent on that which will be this so this will be charged to profit and loss and gain and losses that arises see when your assumption changes you will be incurring some gain or loss it could be gain it could be loss in this case it's a loss actual loss why because your benefit payable increases when your liability increases is this is it a gain for you or a loss it's a loss for you 
your expenses increases you have to pay more now so because of this change in assumption it's a loss that will increase your benefit payable and your obligation also you have to pay more benefit and your obligation also increases and this loss will be charged into profit and loss okay so that's it let's see the marking scheme for part b as i told you discussion is four marks calculation is only two marks okay and this four marks only so now examiner's comment will read examiner told that this question overall is not done so well because it's a time pressured exam how do you know that they are time pressured because this is the last question in your sba question number four and when you come a candidate comes towards the last question examiners know that you are time pressured you are you don't do well in your last question you try to write short or you try to omit because of the time so because of this candidates were not able to write so well they just simply wrote what they know from the root knowledge simply wrote from the root know whatever they know about sms or integrated reporting okay so if you, if a candidate simply described capitals no marks will be given to you if you are not making any reference to sms maximum marks never comes from your knowledge it always comes from your application the way if you are very good in applying it to the case study given to you presented to you more marks you will achieve otherwise no even though your knowledge is 100% correct you will not get the maximum marks remember it now for part a part b and part c okay part a remember professional marks are there so you cannot play around this question try to get those two professional marks by increasing the depth of your discussion the quality okay that means all your questions all the parts of the question has to be attempted to get the two professional marks if you are keeping some not you are not attempting few part out of the three parts you will not get the professional marks okay second the quality now i cannot tell how to show you the you know how to increase the quality of discussion that i cannot do you need to work it on yourself okay so if you see part a okay they they told that from the investor's perspective the investment decision how it can have an impact you have to talk from the point of the investor okay remember the two professional marks even though you think it's okay even if i don't get the two professional marks still it's okay it's just two marks remember the difference between pass and fail could be those two marks your two professional marks sometimes that can be the difference between your pass and failure okay part b first part of b was not well answered because again time pressure because i told you towards the end or maybe the principles were not well understood the current service cost and all but still you can score a pass mark in this if you just discuss the principles behind the calculation for example you told that you started with the salary then it increased then you found the percentage then number of employees who are going to uh, stay they are going to get the benefit so if you explain like this also you will get marks okay if you didn't understand the concept of current service cost second part of b this could be answered without an attempt to first part of if you have not answered the first part of b also you can attempt the second part of b without that also if you have used some basic principles okay for example what is the basic principles all of you know that if your employees are more employee increases you have to pay more cost for you this is very simple you don't need the knowledge of a standard for this second and what was the other assumption salary increase so salary increases means on a higher salary now you have to pay the benefit so your obligation again increases right so this are quite easy so that's it and uh, see you in the next question till then take care